Good day and welcome to this video in which we are going to take a deeper look at the post-processing tools in Juno Cassandra Desktop. Now this video is video 2 of a series of 3 in which we are going to specifically look at the analysis of planned treatments. And I hope you've already watched the first video which deals with the analysis of the forecasted future condition. Prerequisites for this video is we assumed you have already installed .NET Core 8 and Juno Cassandra Desktop and with that that you've watched the Tutorial 1 video series. And if you've done that, you will have a good understanding of how the setup files for Juno Cassandra works, what a model configuration is and how you specify the different features of the model through the model configuration. We also assume that you've watched the first video in this series on post-processing tools. Now, just to reiterate, the post-processing tools with Juno Cassandra Desktop basically fall in three categories. First, there is the analysis of the future condition, of the forecasted future network condition. Secondly, there is the analysis of the treatments and the spending into the future. And thirdly, there is a set of diagnostic tools to help you debug and understand your model better, uncover anomalies in your model, etc. Now, this is going to be the topic of a future video. In this video, we are going to look specifically at the tools to help you analyze your treatments and your spending forecast. Now, just to reiterate the work folder for this tutorial, if you've already downloaded the tutorial data, then you will have unzipped it on your desktop. And I presume that you understand where this work folder is. So I'm basically going to go into Juno Cassandra shortly and I'm going to select this workbench. Also, as we draw graphs of some of the treatment analysis outputs that come out of Juno Cassandra, we are going to go into this post-processing folder over here. So that's this folder. And then specifically, we are going to paste some of the data into this uh, spreadsheet that I've prepared for you and that you can also find in your tutorial one zip download uh, zip file. And you can just extract it and then follow along with me as I paste data into that spreadsheet. Now, I just want to reiterate the, the way you can get this tutorial one data. If you go to the Juno Cassandra documentation and you go to the getting started menu and you go down here to tutorial one, then this is where on at this location here, that's where you download the data for the tutorial. If you have downloaded it in the past, but it's been a while, then um, please download it again. Maybe we've made a few changes in the tutorial data and you ju just make sure you're working with the latest version. All right, so let's head over to Juno Cassandra and dig right into the treat analysis of predicted treatments. So here I've got Juno Cassandra open. I'm going to select my workbench, which is the workbench file that I just pointed out to you. I don't need to rerun my model because I ran it in the previous tutorial. And I can basically just, even if I've closed down Juno Cassandra in the meantime, all that Juno Cassandra does is basically goes into the files in the outputs folder so if i go into my project work folder underneath that is my outputs folder and here are all the outputs for all model parameters and all model configurations and you can see there's quite a lot of files in there and basically what the uh, post processing tools uh, in juno cassandra does it just opens those files and does a lot of calculations on it to summarize the data for you but you can of course also open these files on your own and use the tools such as R Studio or Excel to build your own summaries of the uh, outputs of your Cassandra model. Okay, so I'm not going to rerun the model. I'm just going to go to post processing and I'm going to go, the first tool I'm going to look at is view treatments, which is basically just a list of the treatments that have come out of the model. So if I click on that, I'm going to focus for this video on the configuration, which I called BCA, that's for benefit cost analysis, with a 2.5 million budget. And I click here to load the treatments. And there's all my treatments. If I want to see more columns, I can see, uh, I can just select more columns. So for example, show me the treatment category um, and show me, for example, the comment related to the uh, put into the treatment and the reason for the treatment as well. Now I want to just eat, uh, reiterate here that in this tutorial we are using the default Cassandra road network model but the similar pattern applies to any other model maybe if you build your own model or we release more domain models in future 
the pattern is very similar in terms of the columns that you select, etc. But for this demonstration, we are using a road network specific type of names, etc. So you can see here, it's quite easy to, to view your treatments and very handy is that you can select any row here. For example, there I've selected the element index 199 and you can click on this button, which says show forecast and raw data. And it will open up a window like this where you can see the total forecast for that element. And then in here, you can see the input row in the input set with all of the feature features or attributes related to that network element. So this is very handy for you to understand, for example, why a treatment was triggered. This window, this pop up window, you'll see in other parts of the output as well. And you can make it bigger, you can minimize it, uh, you can even maximize it, although generally it's best left as a floating window like this. And here you can see all your model parameters over all of the different epochs in the model. And you can scroll down and see where the treatment was placed, etc. So this is a very handy uh, feature for you to look at specific treatments. I'm going to close this and you can also filter this list. For example, I just want to see rehabs on chip seal uh, in a rural area for low traffic. And you can see there's a much smaller list. Again, you can open up this window and you can click from one element to the next. And notice that as you select an element, please just make sure you select in this row selector on the on the left hand side. Don't click in a cell you to, to, to refresh this window. You have to click in the little row selection panel. You can see when I click there, this updates all the time. OK, so this helps you understand why a tre certain treatment was triggered, etc. Next, we are going to look at treatment quantities. So this sum summarizes for a specific configuration the treatments that have been placed in different modeling uh, periods. So I'm going to select this option to report the treatments in terms of their categories and also to express the values as a percentage of a total quantity. So I'm going to tick that box. Now, the question is, what column holds your quantity? Because remember, we're domain agnostic. We, we have no requirements for name, uh, naming convention for columns, etc. So you can basically go and select any column in your raw data set that has to represent the quantity for each element. Now, of course, for our model, that will be length. So it's file underscore, which indicates this comes from the input file, and it's the column that holds the length. So I want to express my treatment as a percentage of the total length, right? So that quantity basically is replaced by whatever you, you select here. And if I now select my treatment quantities, then you can see I get a neat table here showing my treatment quantities. And I can also select to group them, uh, for example, by, let's say, surface class. And if I do that now, now I'm going to get one for, for example, for holding actions, I'll get one row for asphalt, AC, and I'll get another row for chip seals, right? Because it's split it. Um, if you go and select, for example, uh, NZTA hierarchy or whatever you've got, you can see you can break it down in many different ways. So each treatment is basically split into those categories. So I'm just going to take this group by off and refresh this. And now I'm going to place this on the clipboard. So I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. And then I'm going to go to the spreadsheet that I showed you earlier. So that is the spreadsheet here in my post processing folder. I'm going to open that spreadsheet. And I'm going to go to the sheet over here that says treatment length in percent. And I'm going to just place my, my cell there on, on B2. I'm going to select B2 and paste the data in there and the graph will basically be refreshing with the same data as you've, you've already downloaded. But you can see here, this is a very insightful way to look at the treatments in terms of the length of the network that is treated. You can see the different categories of treatment, and you can also see how your treatments cyclically need to increase and decrease over time. So this is your treatment that the length of the network that is being treated the percentage length of the network uh, that you are treated with each one of these 
uh, different categories. So that's that is one way to look at it and uh, to look at your data. And of course, you can format this graph any way you want with the coloring you want. You can move your series around, etc. And that's one of the reasons why we don't try to reproduce Excel inside Juno Cassandra. When it comes to graphics, people have a lot of different uh, ideas about how to format and display graphs, etc. We think it's best left for you as an analyst to decide how to display your graphs. But the actual data that we make available for you to help you to get that data into your graphing software, whatever you are using as quickly and as easily as possible. Okay, so that's the, the breakdown of the treatment by category. The next tool is to look at spending over time. So now we are going to go from looking at, for example, how much of the network is being treated in terms of length, and we're just going to focus on actual dollar amounts, and the, the, the actual spending. So uh, I'm, again, I'm going to select my benefit cost analysis model for a 2.5 million budget, and I'm going to group my treatments into categories. And I don't want to scale my costs. I'm just going to uh, select it in the, in the raw dollar values. If I want to scale the cost, for example, I'm going to make this a thousand, then it will divide the cost by a thousand and you'll see it, it displays like that. I can also put this in millions. And there I basically can see how many millions I'm spending in each category. So I'm going to just take this and make it a one again. And I'm going to get my total spending over time. And if I copy this, then again, I can go back to my spreadsheet and I go to my treatment spending sheet. And again, this is just an example of how you can typically do these graphs. And I'll paste the data in there. And this graph now, you can see, whereas the previous one went up and down because the quantity treated over the network differed. Here, it's much more consistent because I have a cap on my budget. I've got a budget constraint. And that constraint was 2.5 million. And the only reason that it has gone over that is because the maintenance is sitting in a separate budget. So this little bit that every time comes over, that's just due to routine maintenance. And you can see that you are spending different amounts in different years, sometimes more on rehabilitation, sometimes more on preservation, and um, other times uh, you're spending more on routine maintenance. So this breakdown is very handy for you to quickly get a grasp of how much you are spending in, in each type of treatment category. The next feature is the um, budget utilization. This allows you to look at how much of the available budget or the budget constraint that you have is actually being utilized. So I've set a 2.5 million budget for this uh, demo data set. And if I get the budget utilization, you can see this gives me the percentage utilization of my budget. Now, I've basically got only a budget. I've specified only a budget for renewals. And I've, I've created a very high budget, essentially an open budget for routine maintenance. And I've got no budget allowed for block paving and concrete for this uh, tutorial. So you can basically just ignore those two categories. But if we look at renewals, which is the main category that I'm interested in for this model, you can see that the model comes at almost 100% of the budget is being utilized in every year. It's very close to 99 uh, to 100%. There's a 99.84, etc. Except for two years. We've got this year, 2035 in which we are spending only 76% of our budget. And then again, in 2040, we're spending about 88% of our budget. Now that's very normal with a, a, a model that depending on the age distribution of your network, etc., you may find that in certain years, if you plan your treatments well, you are going to sit with a little bit of a surplus budget. But overall, the fact that your budget is being almost filled every year indicates that you are quite close to the limit as long as you're getting uh, the appropriate condition uh, that would be indication that your budget is relatively good you can also select to show the remaining balance in other words what is the actual dollar amount that is not being spent so if i if i use that then of course for maintenance i've got an open budget so you can see there's a huge amount not being spent but that essentially is a meaningless number but when you look at the renewals, you can see there's only 4,000 out of 2.5 million that is not being spent, except in these two years, 2035 
and 2040 in which I've got a bit more of a surplus left. So this is quite a useful tool. You can track your budget utilization over time and you want to, of course, have a budget that allows you to utilize most of it in most of the analysis periods. Finally, we will look at the treatment counts. Now the treatment counts it just gives you an indication of how many treatments were placed and you can slice and dice it in different ways. Let's have a look at that. So the, the simplest way is to just look at the number of treatments per year. So that gives you your treatment count over year. Now remember that's all types of treatments grouped together. But as a modeling analyst, that's one of the first things you may want to check because what you don't want is to have a huge amount of treatments in the first few years and then almost nothing later, right? That would indicate some sort of a, a trigger problem in your model and it's not properly applying a long-term planning approach in, in your analysis. So you can see for this benefit cost analysis model, it's treated 63 treatments in the first modeling period, and then it went up to 90, 65, 82, and then it, it came down quite significantly. And remember, I showed you that in some years you're doing more rehabilitations, which eats up a lot of the budget. So there's fewer budget available for preservation. And that's why you get fewer treatments here. But you can see later on, again, you are reaching similar uh, numbers of treatments as you had in the beginning, even higher in some instances. And so this is a relatively even distribution of treatment counts. But there is, like you can see here, in this year you did basically just rehabilitations. And so that is something that you probably will want to go and do, look at and maybe tweak your model triggers, etc. a little bit to address that. We can also look at this view, but now instead of just plonking all treatments in the same category, we can uh, look at the counts per year. And so here you can see uh, the, the number of preservations that were done in, in different years uh, and, and so forth. Now, I just want to point out one thing that in this count over year, you are, we are excluding routine maintenance. Whereas here, when we look at the counts per year and category, we are actually including maintenance. So if you look at this year in which it only placed nine treatments, it was in period 12. And we go and look at it here. So in period 12, you'll see this, this two plus five plus two gives me my nine, but my routine maintenance, there's a lot more routine maintenance being done in that year. But this routine maintenance is excluded from this simple calculation in which we are looking at counts per year. All right, so just bear that in, in, in mind. Then we also have counts by element. It just shows you how many elements receive zero treatments. In this model, all of them are being treated in the modeling period. Um, there's, there is 25% uh, of treatments receive, of 25% of elements receive one treatment, 55 receive two treatments, which seem realistic for our modeling period. I think we use 20 years there is 19% that receive three treatments and less than 1% that receive four treatments. Now, the, in the 20 year period, why would there be some that receive four treatments? Well, we can go and look at the, at the parameter forecast, which is in the end, one of the most powerful ways to understand your model. And if we open up the parameter forecast and just look at, for example, I'm going to look at my pavement distress index here and I get my forecast. Then you will see in some instances, by the way, with this new feature that we'll release soon, version 1.3.0, your committed treatments will be shown as a dark, navy dark uh, blue uh, block to distinguish committed treatments from other treatments. But you can see that with the New Zealand type of road model, normally when we do a rehabilitation, like in this case here, we would follow up that rehabilitation with a second coat seal in the following year or in a f one or two or three years afterwards. And because of that, later on in a 20 year period, if you've got a follow on seal, then you've already got three treatments. And because of that, you, it may happen that a small percentage actually will get four treatments in a 20 year period. But you can see for most of them where you do a chip seal, there would be only one chip seal followed up by another one. And that is the reason why if we go back to our treatment counts and we count by element, we can see the bulk of the, the elements, 55%, only received two treatments over the 20-year period, 
which is exactly the type of thing that we are looking for. So that's it for this video, uh, focusing on the post-processing tools to help you understand your treatments. In the next video, we are going to look at the other tools on this menu, which deals with the analysis of um, your model and to help you debug the model and understand why things are not exactly the way you think they should be, etc. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.